Donald Trump's favorability as a 2024 presidential candidate has been on a sharp upward curve over the last several months, as he currently leads President Joe Biden, a Democrat, by 3.9% nationwide, as per the latest average from Real Clear Politics. Comparatively, at this point in the 2020 presidential election cycle, the then Democratic nominee Biden was ahead of President Trump by 4.8%, and by election day, of course, as we all remember, that lead had grown to more than 7%. This means that as of now, Trump's performance in national polls here against Biden has improved by 11 and a half points since election day of 2020. Keep in mind, though, as well, that even as Biden won the popular vote by four and a half points in 2020, the Electoral College bias was in favor of Republicans in that election, and so he only managed to defeat Trump by a combined margin of approximately 42,000 votes in three key states. And so that led to many election analysts, including myself, to suggest that in order for Biden to win the 2024 election, he would likely need to at least repeat that margin in the popular vote, four and a half points, in order to be re-elected via the Electoral College. This raises the question, just how lopsided can the 2024 presidential electoral map get in a landslide victory for Donald Trump? Just like I did in my video covering Joe Biden's best case scenario, let's go through every single state on this map to see just how many electoral votes Donald Trump can win if things continue to trend favorably in his direction. Let's begin by examining the states expected to firmly support President Trump in this best case scenario. And by best case scenario, I mean that he continues to lead Biden by more than four percentage points in the national popular vote throughout the summer, and then by election day, let's just imagine that his polling advantage is as large as five percentage points. These are the states in that scenario where he would be projected to win comfortably, with margins above 12 percentage points. They encompass all of the traditionally strong Republican states in the Mountain West, and down the Great Plains, with the exception of Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, as well as most of the Deep South, with the only exceptions really being Georgia and North Carolina. In the Midwest, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Indiana are each almost certain to favor Trump significantly as well. That puts the former Republican president at 122 electoral votes, and now for the states that would normally be considered likely Republican in a competitive presidential race, meaning Republicans have a clear edge, but where an upset may be possible, the states of Iowa and Ohio will join these states with safe Republican ratings in this landslide scenario for Trump. They were both previously part of the Obama coalition in 08 and 12, but have become Republican strongholds since Trump's 2016 win. Trump's victories in 16 and 20 here came by margins greater than 8 points, and it's more than reasonable to believe that in a Trump plus 5, or better, national environment, they would shift to at least 12 points in his favor. As for the state of Alaska, meanwhile, though slightly more rocky for Republicans in recent elections, notably with Democrat Mary Peltola's 2022 House election victory, and Trump's 2020 margin being the narrowest in over 50 years in a presidential race here, Alaska is still a broadly conservative state, having previously backed Republicans by safe margins in six straight elections. And so, with Alaska joining the safe Republican Party, Trump now has 148 electoral votes to his name. But we're not quite done with these safe Republican states here. Maine's 2nd Congressional District went to Trump by 10 points in 2016 and 8 points in 2020. It would easily become safe Republican in a landslide victory like this for the former president. More controversially though, I also believe that the state of Florida, with its 30 electoral votes, would become a safe Republican state in this scenario. Donald Trump currently leads Biden by 9.1% in Florida according to Decision Desk HQ slash The Hill. And remember, Florida shifted 4.5 points towards Trump between 2016 and 2020, the third most of any state. And a Trump plus 5 environment would mean a near 10-point shift towards Trump nationally since 2020. 
And also keep in mind that Republicans are coming off monster statewide victories in the 2022 midterms. Governor Ron DeSantis and Senator Marco Rubio were re-elected by 19 and 16 points, respectively. With all of that in mind, Florida joins the safe Republican states, pushing Trump to 179 electoral votes, less than 100 shy of the magic number, 270. Alrighty, now before we move on to categorizing the solid states for President Biden, please take this time to consider subscribing to my channel below. According to my YouTube analytics page, only 16.5% of my viewers have been subscribed to the channel. I would really appreciate it if we could get that number closer to 50% as we proceed deeper into the 2024 election cycle. I do put a ton of work into these videos, and your support really does mean everything to me. With that out of the way though, for Joe Biden, most of the states that voted for him by more than 12 points in 2020 are going to remain in the safe Democrat column for him once again, even in a scenario like this. Though there are a few exceptions, namely the states of New Jersey and Illinois. Illinois went to Biden by 17 points in 2020 though it shifted by two and a half points to the right relative to the nation since 2016. And so, out of these safe Democrat states that backed Biden by at least 15 points in 2020, I think Illinois, along with New Jersey, which went blue by 16 points, are most likely to dip into likely Dem territory. The state of Oregon is another popular pick here. I see a lot of people on election Twitter and in the YouTube sphere naming it as a potentially vulnerable state for Democrats in a Republican wave year. Though I guess I am a little bit less convinced. It certainly did feel like it was shifting to the right after 2016, where Trump came within 11 points of Hillary Clinton, but it then shifted three points further to the left of the country than the average state in 2020. So with that, it's kind of right on the border between safe and likely to me, I guess I can place it in likely for now, though it doesn't really make that much of a difference in the electoral count. Joe Biden leads Trump in that electoral count right now by just two electoral votes, with 181 to 179. 178 electoral votes remain, and the first likely state that I am going to place into either column is Texas for Trump, the second largest state by population behind California its 40 electoral votes will be critical in helping the former Republican president get to over 270. Trump did not win Texas by a double-digit margin in either of his two elections, 9 points in 2016 and 5.5% in 2020, but Republican gains among Latinos, especially in the Rio Grande Valley, has at least temporarily put a halt to the more optimistic and sometimes exaggerated forecasts among Democratic strategists and voters alike, as to the potential of a blue Texas here in the 2020s. The Lone Star State has generally trended to the left, which is why it is not joining Florida in the safe Republican category, and while expectations have been exaggerated for sure, Democrats are definitely becoming more consistently competitive in statewide races here. Though of course, in a best case scenario for Trump, he would easily be able to hold on to it, perhaps even by double digits. But I do think that given the general trend to the left in recent years in Texas, it's more likely to remain in the 7 to 12 point range. So it is likely Republican. Shifting over to the state of North Carolina, a perennially purple state, it's been decided by less than 5 points in each of the last four presidential elections, though it has not voted for a Democratic presidential candidate since Obama in 08. Republicans have also won five consecutive Senate races here as well, and though Trump won by just one and a half points in 2020, there is zero reason to think that he won't win again here in 2024. As he's polling ahead of Biden by about eight points, according to DDHQ, and the national environment would be shifting hard right. I do think that given this specific scenario, the margin would likely fall right around seven to eight points. Shifting over to the West, the state of Colorado is the final state to go in the likely column in either direction. Having voted for Biden by 13 and a half points in 2020, it'll obviously be likely Democrat. Although it was considered a battleground as recently as 2016, the six-point shift toward Biden in Colorado in 2020 
was the second largest shift of any states. So I do think that even in a Trump wave year like this, Biden could still win by double digits in Colorado, though it's most likely to fall below 12%. As for the lean states, I'm going to start with Biden. He's going to win New Mexico, Minnesota, Virginia, New Hampshire, and Maine by margins between 2 to 7%. These states would all be a lot closer in this scenario than they were in 2020. Biden won them in order by 10, 7, 11, 7, and 9 points in that election. New Mexico voted for Republican George W. Bush in 04 and backed Democrat Al Gore by less than a tenth of a percent in 2000. It also ranks as the 12th least educated state in the country, the lowest of any Biden state besides swing state Nevada and is the 15th most rural, which ranks right behind Vermont and Maine among the least urban Democratic states. New Mexico's trend, though, has been pretty flat since 2004. Democratic presidential candidates have won it four straight times since then, and the results were always about six to eight points to the left of wherever the nation was. That said, it is the only majority Hispanic state in the U.S., and if Republicans keep making gains with Hispanic voters, that could potentially push it closer and closer to the lower end of the lean range in a Trump landslide. Minnesota, meanwhile, was decided by a tilt margin, 1.5 points, in 2016, but it shifted hard to the left in 2020, backing Biden by 7 points. It's voted for Democrats in a record 12 straight presidential elections. Down in Virginia, it's not the reliable state the Democrats want it to be. They recently lost the governorship in 2021, and even in 2016, when Hillary Clinton ran with longtime Virginia Senator Tim Kaine as her running mate, she won by less than five points. New Hampshire and Maine, up in New England, are consistently the most competitive states in the Northeast. Biden did show a lot of strength here, though, in 2020, winning by 7.5 points, and while he's losing in almost every other competitive state, he is polling comfortably ahead of Trump right now in New Hampshire. So that'll leave these six key battleground states, plus Nebraska's second district, responsible for the 78 electoral votes that will ultimately decide the election. Trump leads in the latest electoral counts by 10 electoral votes, with 235 to Biden's 225. In the 2016 election, Trump won all of these states remaining, except for Nevada. Then Biden won every single one of them in 2020. Now obviously, in a best-case scenario for Trump, where he wins the national popular vote by more than 5 points, he would win all of them by at least lean margins. Biden's margin of victory in each of these states was less than three points in 2020, and a near 10-point national shift towards Trump would of course push them hard in his favor. Interestingly, there seems to be a consistent trend in recent polling data at least that Trump's prospects are looking better across the Sunbelt states of Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia than in the Rust Belt states of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. In fact, in order of best to worst, Trump's polling advantage over Biden, according to Decision Desk HQ, is highest in Georgia, then Arizona, then Nevada, then Michigan, then Wisconsin, and finally Pennsylvania. For more on that, you can check out my recent video where I filled out a 2024 electoral map based on the latest polling averages in every state. It'll pop up again in the top right, but you can also see it on my channel page. I do go into more of an in-depth analysis of these six key battlegrounds in most of my other videos, so you can feel free to check those out, as I'd rather just go through them together here for this video's purpose. Nebraska's second congressional district remains. Biden won it by a six-point margin in 2020, but it was redistricted several points more Republican following the 2020 census. Trump won it by a slim two-point margin in 16, and Romney defeated Obama within these lines by seven points in 2012. It will tilt Republican on this map, giving Donald Trump a grand total of 313 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 225. In terms of the electoral count itself, the only change between this outcome and the 2016 election where Trump was victorious over Hillary Clinton 
is that Nevada would flip into the Republican column. Keep in mind as well that Trump did only win 232 electoral votes in 2020, so this would be a big boost, one that sees Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, as well as Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District flip from blue to red. This is probably the largest realistic shift in today's electoral climate, where massive landslide victories of more than 400 electoral votes, for example, are increasingly rare. Our politics have simply become too polarized for a Republican presidential candidate to have enough crossover appeal to win in, say, deep blue states like New Jersey, Illinois, and Oregon, and vice versa for a Democrat to win in places like Indiana, Missouri, or Kansas. The margins may be closer than expected in these best case scenario videos for either candidate in these states, but you certainly shouldn't expect Biden or Trump to suddenly start winning all of these fringe states, even in the most ideal electoral conditions. That does it though for today's video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel down below and hit that notification bell for more videos like this in the future. Feel free to let me know in the comment section what you think of this map as well as any other videos you would like to see in the future. Shout out to my channel members on screen here, thank you so much for your support. If you would like to become a member, go ahead and click that join button below this video to receive exclusive perks. Be sure to check out electionpredictionsofficial.com for my latest 2024 presidential forecast. You can also check out more content from my channel here, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. EP out.